What's going on, world? So, I am completely finished with orientation, with uh, sign my lease, all that good stuff. So, uh, I signed my lease Wednesday. I went by the company store, purchased some stuff for the truck, basic stuff, uh, some stuff that I, I needed, and I purchased one thing that I wanted, which was a CB radio. Because I've been out, you know, here for a little bit, and I realized the value of a CB radio in certain uh, situations. So, I purchased CB radio, all the parts for it, uh, parts including like how to mount it, the cables, the bracket, the antenna, all that good stuff. Charge it to my truck. They tell me, uh, I asked if, if there's anybody on, on site that could install it. And the store people's like, sure, you can go over to the detail uh, facility, that building. Uh, here at Springfield, that's like, it starts with number 20. So I go over there Wednesday. Um, the lady that was there Wednesday was nice and cool. Um, when you go in, if you've ever been there, it's like a Banks teller style with the glass. So you can't, I mean, it's a door. I don't think they really want customers going back there or not, to, you know, bothering them. But it's a sliding door and there was a lady sitting right there. So she just slides it. She uh, speaks, uh, asks how she can help me. I told her, hi, I just purchased a CB radio and all the parts for it. Company store told me to come over here and uh check you know about getting it installed she said okay yeah we can install it for you uh they, and she explained how they pretty much install everything if you want to get a satellite tv uh stereo system all that good stuff and she told me the price i think it was 55 dollars. so i was like okay cool but she says we, uh, we're we're kind of backed up we can't uh get you until friday i say that because today is saturday so i had some uh well, you saw in the other clip, my my uh, APU stopped working. So I came back early Thursday to get that fixed. And that got fixed and taken care of. So I was like, okay, let me run over here and check just in case maybe somebody decided, you know, that they uh, didn't want to get something installed. Maybe they have an opening. So I'll go over there. Same lady was there. I said, hey, how you doing? Uh, just checking to see, did anybody counsel for today? Do you have any availability? And she was like, okay, uh, let me check. And I told her, for, I, I'm just getting the CB radio installed. She said, well, unfortunately, nobody canceled. But uh, if you give me your number, your name, I'll take you down in case somebody does. I'll give you a call. I did not get a call Thursday. But she says, if I if I don't hear from her Thursday, that means, you know, she's going to call me Friday. So I was like, okay. So I didn't get a call Thursday. Friday comes. I don't get a call. So I'm like, okay, let me go check and make sure everything's okay. Make sure I'm in the system. So I go over there. The nice lady wasn't there. Uh, it was a guy and another lady. So when I come in, uh, it's just them two. They both looked like they were busy. They were behind, they were looking at their computers. They were on their phones. So I don't like people staring at me, you know, when I'm uh, working and busy and you know, I just, I turn, you know, my back. I don't want to stare at them and make it obvious and make it seem like I'm rushing them or whatnot. So I waited and I waited and I waited. So 30 minutes went by. Then the guy comes out. I was like, hi, sir, how you doing? And he basically gave me the one finger and uh, walked out the building. So I didn't know what that was about. I didn't take it personal. I just figured, well, maybe if something important came up, he had to go. He was gone for like 10 minutes, but the lady was still there. At this time, she wasn't on the phone. So I'm staring, but not like staring, you know, with a frown that like there, like in my eyes. And I guess maybe because I'm from the South, if you see someone that looks lost or like they in need of help and you know, they clearly don't belong there, I'm not a mechanic. I don't work over there. I was wearing this, honestly. <laughs> Clearly, I need some help. I got there, like I, I don't know if I said it. I got there at 9 a.m. 
because they opened up very early. So I got there at nine. Uh, the guy was gone, like I said, for about 10 minutes. He comes back. I asked him again. I was like, hello, sir, excuse me. He kept walking, played like he didn't hear me, like he didn't see me. Uh, the lady continued to play like she didn't see me. The, now at this point, I am getting a little, you know, ticked off. Like, hey, I'm, I'm clearly a customer trying to, you know, in need of some help and some assistance. Why are y'all not trying to help me? So, like I said, I got there at nine at, and I know some, some people would be like, you would have just either left or you would have been walk, you would have walked back there and been like, hey, I need some help. Do y'all see me? I didn't want to create a scene, nothing like that. Because again, I didn't know what they were working on. I didn't know if they were talking on speakerphone because it's kind of like soundproof glass that they're behind. So long story short, 11 o'clock comes, I'm sitting down in a chair that's in the hallway and a lady finally, and at this point I'm on my phone because I'm bored. She comes, she said, hey, uh, do you need any help? At 11 o'clock. And I was like, yes, I was just checking to see, you know, what time am I scheduled for my uh, service? So she looks me up in the, in the system. She says, oh, uh, I just saw you on your phone. I didn't want to, I thought you were busy. I only got on my phone to just, you know, try to kill some time. And it was ridiculous. I was only on my phone maybe two or three minutes. Now, strictly to kill time so I wouldn't be staring, giving them the death stare. Because obviously they didn't want to help me and they saw me there. So I just ignored what she said because I know she was uh, BSing me. And I was like, well, I'm just really trying to see what time I'm going to be uh, getting service today for my CB radio. So she looked me up. She said, oh, you're in the system. You're up next. And I was like, OK, um, you know, what's the, what's the procedure? Uh, she said, oh, um, I'm not sure. I just work back here. But Joe is going to be your service provider. Just go ask him. So I go in, in the back and it's similar. All the uh, mechanics are avoiding me, avoiding eye contact, not, not acknowledging me. This is over in Bay 20 here at Springfield. None of the mechanics would acknowledge my presence. I don't know who Joe is. I don't know who the fuck that is. So I'm walking around. I just go up to everybody. Hey, are you Joe? Hey, are you Joe? No, I don't know. Who, I don't know where he's at. I hadn't seen him. And then they go back to doing what they're doing. And there was one nice lady mechanic. Uh, she helped me when I was over at Success Leasing when I was trying to uh, figure out how do I get gas to, because uh, I thought maybe they provide the fuel when I wanted to test drive it. And she explained that process. She just happened to be coming over there to pick up some tools. She's nice. I forgot her name, but that lady's nice. Uh, and she says, uh, well, Joe was here, but I think he went to lunch early. So I told her, okay, well, thank you. And then I asked her what was the process. She said, like, well, usually they call you guys and then they either tell you to pull up in the front or the back because the, the bays are accessible from both. And I was like, okay. And I told her, thank you. And at that point, sorry. I had to cut off my watch. At that point, I was done. Uh, it took someone that wasn't even over there working to come help me, and I've been here since nine o'clock. Now it's, it's noon. So I was like, all right, they wanna play, I can play too. So I go back to the store, and I ask the uh, ladies at the store, and they're nice, both of the ladies, shout out to both of the ladies at the, uh, at the store here at Springfield. And I said, hey, am I able to return stuff if I charge this in my truck? And they said, yes, depending on how long ago it was and the condition. And um, she also said the receipt, but because I charged in my truck, it's in the system. And I was like, okay, well, it's my CB, the CB parts and the antenna. And it's like, oh, was something wrong with it? I said, no, everything was perfect. I told them the truth. I couldn't get any help from over there at the repair building. And they were like, do you need us to make a call? I said, no, you two have been awesome nothing that you all did but 
how I was raised, my mom always told me my time and my money is valuable. And if someone doesn't value that, I don't have to do business with them. So um, I didn't tell them that, but I told them, no, you guys were great. Y'all didn't do anything. The people over there didn't want to help me. So it's, uh, it's all good. I can get my money back. I'll get my money back. And because I charge to the truck, I don't get the physical dollar amount back, but it will be credited back to me. So uh, that's how it was explained to me. So that's cool. So I will see the reimbur LSA reimbursed the amount for all the stuff I purchased. So um, after I left out of there, I was I was pissed off because I could have I need to go back home to Texas and take care of business. And I could have left possibly Wednesday, Thursday or even Friday. But because I was waiting to get the CB radio and to get service, I missed out on several loads that could have got me back to Texas so I can take care of stuff. Now here it is Saturday. So I'm just making this video to say if someone is not valuing your time or your money, don't do business with them. You don't have to make a scene. I didn't make a scene. I just don't, I won't, I won't do business here with them again. Uh, I'll just go to Freightliner or somewhere else or I'll go on YouTube and figure out how to do it myself so i was just upset that now because i'm reefer and refrigerated stuff usually is primarily weekday and i'm probably gonna be stuck here and i i need to get back home um i got an appointment on tuesday and it's early in the morning and I made this appointment back in February. So I don't even know if I'm gonna make the appointment now. And to reschedule it, it's probably gonna be another month or so out before they can take me in. So that's really why I'm, I'm upset. Plus I hadn't been around my wife or my daughter and it's been almost two and a half weeks now. So, contrary to what you see on, on YouTube, this is not a, a, a just a simple couple day process. This was a long process. So, I feel like my time was wasted. And now I'm over here by driver lineup and I'm, I'm have to go in here and beg and see if they even have anything for today. So that's what I'm about to do and uh, I'll keep you guys updated. And driver lineup it, for anybody at Springfield Prime Terminal is in the uh, Plaza Building, first floor. Peace. Okay, so update just left out of uh, driver lineup. Speaking with uh, driver lineup, and they don't have anything headed to Texas, uh, so. maybe Monday but they said if something comes available today if like someone is relaying a load or something here then I can pick it up and take it to Texas they can do that to get me to Texas so this is why I was upset yesterday and why I didn't make a, this video yesterday I wasn't smiling like this I was pissed because again I'm 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 reefer, refrigerated, edible stuff or whatever. So that's usually a Monday, a weekday type of thing. And trying to catch something on the weekend, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's just, my chances and likelihood is just low. So they basically told me my PTA, projected time availability, it's still showing good as of yesterday because um, I'm new and their app is similar to Swift, but it's not quite like Swift's app. So on Swift's app, you have to pretty much every day or every couple hours, you have to update your availability. 
just so they know that you are available for a load to be dispatched on. So with, uh, with Prime, what the gentleman just told me, as long as I don't, I guess, call or tell them that I'm not ready or available, it stays good from the previous day. So, and then they make a notation, you know, like in my case, I wanted to go something that takes me to Texas. Like it is lows if I just, if I'm willing to go anywhere, but I, I need to go back home because I have an appointment. So, uh, yeah, that's why I was upset with those people over at, uh, I don't even know what the building is. I just say the, the detail shop, Bay 20, primarily here at Spring. Wow, this is, this is nice. Don't know how to work this. But I guess that controls those. So this is, this is nice. This is the bunk room. So I'll let you know how this goes. So Day. this morning was my last day at campus and I just got lucky that they had rooms available um, I don't have enough fuel to sit you know to idle in my truck so I was like well if they have a room available I will check in you know check in and I just came up here checked in they had this available so yeah Hopefully, I get something tomorrow. The chances of me getting something today was slim. That's what driver lineup told me. So that's what made me, you know, prompt to, okay, let me check and see if I can get a bunk room, which is cool. It's a cool option that they have here. I'm at Springfield. Um, and again, I would have slept in my truck, but I just didn't have enough fuel to idle my, uh, for my APU for it to be running all night. And I really didn't want to go charge any uh, fuel to my truck until I leave. And um, yeah, that's it. So I'll go get my stuff and I'll be here for the night.